All right, we are at the top of the hour, so that means it's time to begin. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody who's joining us today. Welcome to the ACT Training Webinar Series. Today's topic will be synchronization. We're managing offline and remote usage. And just a few housekeeping items before we begin. For those of you who are new to these monthly webinars, uh, on Zoom, you can ask us questions in the question and answer panel, the Q&A panel. I've got uh, Ed Scott over here. He's going to answer some questions for you. Uh, but please keep them on topic. Uh, we're not really going to entertain questions that are not on the topic of synchronization today. Um, also, this webinar will be recorded. So whatever email uh, you used to sign up for this webinar, we will send you a link to this recording after it's over. Uh, also, if you want to look at any of the previous webinars we've done, I'll show you a link at the end of this one to where you can find those. Also, at the end, after this webinar is over, we're going to send you not just a link to the recording, but also a link to a survey we'd like you to fill out if you don't mind. Just answer a few questions on what you thought of this topic or what you thought of the, the presentation as uh, overall. And if you have any ideas, any requests for future webinars, we, we happily take those uh, just so that we know we're delivering the topics that matter to you. So with all that said, let's begin here, and I'm going to talk about our agenda for today. Uh, after I give my little introduction, we're going to get into a, a demonstration of synchronization. I'm going to show you ACT Premium Desktop Synchronization, and then I'll show you how you can synchronize if you're on an ACT Premium Cloud account. Then we'll cover some best practices. When should you sync? When shouldn't you sync? What are the types of uh, settings that you should use when syncing? Um, and which uh, format is best for you? And also at the end, I'm going to show you how to set up your ACT uh, scheduler so that you can do automatic syncs and even set reminders to your remote users to synchronize if they haven't done so after a certain number of days. We've got, uh, again, like I mentioned, live chat is, is there. It's available for you in the Q&A panel. And then we'll have a survey uh, after we're all finished. A little bit about me. My name is Brent Milner. I'm an ACT trainer. I've been with the company for over 17 years. Uh, my job here is to create training videos, to train internally uh, our employees, to train our partners, and to train our, cu our customers. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I live in the northern Arizona region in Flagstaff, 7,000 feet where it's cool. And so I get to walk into the woods with my dogs and my wife, and we have a good time up here. So let's talk about ACT Premium Desktop Synchronization. Uh, when you have ACT Premium installed, you have the option to also install a synchronization service, which will then and let you enable synchronization uh, privileges, permissions to some of the users in your database. And so there's a few steps that we're going to cover to show you how to do this. I'll cover all these uh, bullets on the left. We're going to install the service. We're going to assign some permissions to certain users or one user really so that they can synchronize to the, the host database. We'll enable synchronization on the host database. We'll create some sync sets, which means just what, ki what type of data should this user synchronize? If I don't want them to synchronize the entire database, I can set, up, set it up so that they only synchronize certain types of records. Then we'll create a remote database for this user who can then log in from their computer and synchronize to the host database. So let's have a look at that right now. I've got ACT Premium uh, Desktop installed. Uh, I've updated to the latest version, I believe, which is, let's have a look at it. Right now we're on version 25.0 update three. And this is important that you have update three for the uh, sync scheduler or the ACT schedule that we're gonna talk about at the end. If you don't have update three, you can go to your help menu, go to act notifications, and this will launch a little window in the lower right to tell you whether you're up to date or not. If you're not up to date, there will be a link there to help you get the latest version. So let's talk about synchronization. Um, we're gonna use uh, a synchronization um, uh, service that runs in the background and it's going to be performed uh, 
from the, the host computer. It's going to run on the host computer wherever your database is, is housed. That's where you will install your synchronization service. So you don't have to install anything on every individual computer. You only have to install it on the machine or the server where your database lives. And there's two different types of synchronization that we're going to talk about. There's network synchronization and there's internet synchronization. Now you're going to use network synchronization if you're coming into the office. So you, uh, you go into the office, you do your work, you go home, you may do some more work. And then when you come back into the office again, you're going to synchronize within your companies or within your, your, your buildings infranet or intranet. And so you'll use network sync because you'll be inside um, your network. If you're not going to be in the office when syncing, you're syncing out on the road somewhere. Uh, what you'll do is you'll use internet sync because you'll be you'll need to uh, use the internet to access the uh, the database, the host database, and so you may need to you may need to configure your office router with, with port forwarding. It might be required when you're using internet sync. So I'm going to show you how to decide or how to install either one of these. Now you have to choose either network or internet sync. And so the way to do this is on your host computer where your database is. I'm just going to minimize ACT for now and my browser. You'll open up a Windows Explorer and a file explorer here. And usually if you go to the root drive of your computer, in this case, it's the C drive, you'll see a, a folder there. This is where you've installed ACT. You'll see a folder that says ACT underscore. And if you're on version 25, it'll say 25. Uh, this is the folder that is put on your computer when you install, when you extract the ACT download. So if you go back in your memory and remember when you installed ACT, uh, you downloaded a file and then you double clicked it and it extracted ACT to the C drive and it put this folder there. If I go into that folder, you'll see all the installation files that you have uh, when you install ACT. So if I wanted to install ACT, I would just click set up here. Um, if I want to install either internet sync or network sync, I can go into either one of these folders and then double click the setup file there or right click and run a uh, run as administrator because it does need to be done by an administrator of the machine. Um, there's two ways to do this. You can either do it from the actual act network sync directory or the act internet sync directory. Or if you're on this act uh, folder and you run this setup file, what this will do is it'll give you that, that sort of DVD. Remember when we used to install software from CDs and DVDs, it'll give you that little window. And from here, you can choose to install network sync services and choose either network or internet. Either way you do it, you'll get to the same place. Uh, when you click network sync service or internet sync service, it's just going to launch that executable and it's going to start installing it. Um, now I've already installed network sync service. So that's why it's giving me this message to modify, repair, or remove the program. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to cancel out. But the, the setup here is pretty straightforward. If you've ever installed any software, uh, then you'll, you'll be on your way to doing it correctly here. Now, once it's installed, uh, what should happen is on your start menu, you should now see uh, this new a thing called at work, ACT Network Sync Service or ACT Internet Sync Service, depending on which one you chose. It's also down below in its own folder here. Uh, when you click that, you'll click yes to the user account control window, and this will start the, the sync service. Now, a window may or may not come up here. If it does show up, if you have a window appears here, great. If not, don't worry. All you have to do is go to your taskbar down here in the lower right corner and you're looking for this little icon that has the two arrows. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you what sync service you've installed and whether it's running or not. So my little, my little pop-up here says it's ACT Network Sync Service and it's running. You can right-click that and, and choose Show Hide, and this will make the window appear for you. So here's the sync service. It's either internet or it's network. I'm using network. Now, first-time users aren't going to have anything in this little white uh, window here. And that just means you need to add a database. So you're going to add the database, the host database to which you'll be syncing. 
when you click that add button, it's going to take you, it's going to try and figure out where you're keeping your databases. Most of the time it'll guess correctly, but you may need to navigate to your, your database files, your pad files um, on your computer. So once you find that, it's usually in ACT, ACT data databases, and in there it'll show you all the different uh, database pad files, PAD, it stands for, I believe, Pointer ACT database, um, and it'll show you uh, the shortcuts to your databases. So choose the one that you want to add, click it and click open, and then it'll add that database to this layout here. Now, as you can see, because I'm using ACT Network Sync Service, it's telling me we're going to connect in port 65100. Um, that's a, a fixed port. So hopefully that's available to you inside your intranet. Um, and then this will be all set and ready to go. If you, for, if for whatever reason you need to stop uh, the sync service, um, there's a button here for you to do it. You can also start or stop your sync service from the taskbar down at the bottom by right-clicking and choosing start or stop. Okay, so now that's running. My sync service is running. I can close this window. If I, if I click the X, it's not shutting down the service. It's just removing that little window. You can always check it any time again. Just hover over that little icon to show whether it's running or not. Now when we go into ACT and uh, we open our database, the next thing I want to do here is set up one of my users so that they will have remote administration permissions. I'm setting up one of my users so that they will be able to synchronize to this database. So I'm going to go to my tools menu. And from the tools menu, I'm going to choose manage users. This will give me a list of all the users of this database. And it'll tell me their security roles and, and all that other stuff. Let's choose Al. I'm going to make Al my remote user. You can do a couple of things here. You can double click his name or highlight it and click edit user information. Either way, you're going to get to the same place. This will take me into my user information for Al. And I just want to skip ahead to this add permissions area. You could click next a few times to get there, but I'm going to jump straight to it. Let's click add permissions. And then this will show me the current permissions that Al has. He can delete records. He can export to Excel and so on. But the permission I want to give him is this one. It's called remote administration. So I'm going to highlight that and click the right arrow. And that'll give that permission to Al. And that's all I need to do. It's a one-time setup for him. Once I click finish, it will give Al this permission now to uh, remotely synchronize to the host database. But I'm not finished. There's a few other things that I want to do. So I'm going to close that window. And the next thing I want to do is make sure that this database is enabled for synchronization. I think I've did this yesterday, but I'm just going to double check to make sure this database is still uh, enabled for synchronization. So from my tools menu, again, I'm going to locate the synchronized database uh, menu, submenu. And from here, I'm going to choose synchronization panel. If you have never enabled synchronization before for a database, there will be a link here that says enable synchronization. All the other links will be disabled. So I've already enabled it. All you have to do is just click that link that says enable synchronization, and then it will, it will enable it. Um, now we have some admin tasks. And the next thing I want to do here is um, manage a sync set. So I mentioned this before at the very start, how we can create a sync set, meaning I want, if I don't want to synchronize every single record in my database. Maybe I have a huge database and I don't want Al's synchronization process to run for, you know, a half hour or so. Maybe I want it to uh, be a little bit quicker. I can manage a sync set so that he just is only synchronizing a smaller set of, of records with the main database. So I'm going to click this manage sync set. And you can see I've created one for one of my previous employees. Her name was is Yvonne. So she's got her own sync set, but I'm going to create one for, for Al right now. So I'm going to click create new sync set. And I just need to give this a name. I'm just going to call it Al Blackwell sync set. You can call it whatever you want. You can give it a description down below. Uh, if you want to remind yourself exactly which records uh, this user will be synchronizing, it might be a good idea to put that in the description. 
Um, I'm going to leave that blank for now, though. I'm going to click Next. And now I need to choose uh, the user uh, who will be synchronizing. So I'm going to choose Al, and I'm going to move him to the right column. And then I'm going to click Next again. And now I need to define the criteria. So what exactly do I want Al to synchronize? Do I want him to synchronize all available contacts? If so, that number is going to be 300. That's not very many, uh, but you may have databases that have thousands and thousands of, of records. Uh, so that could take a long time uh, for that synchronization process to run. I'm going to choose define sync set criteria. I'm going to get a smaller uh, set of, of records to synchronize. When I click next, now I have to define the sync set. What are the uh, what is the criteria that I want to choose for Al to synchronize? So I'll click Create Criteria. And this is going to open kind of a, an advanced query window. If you've ever used an advanced query in ACT, this will be familiar. This is where we create rules in the database to identify the records that should be synced. So I'm going to keep it simple here. I only want to synchronize records where Al is the record manager. That makes the most sense to me. So I'm going to choose contact records here. And for the field name, I'm going to scroll down to the R's and choose record manager. And I want the record manager to equal. And sometimes it gives you a drop down here. Sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, just type out the person's uh, username or their, I'm sorry, not their username, but their con their full name. So Al Blackwell. I could also choose uh, begins with Al or contains Blackwell whatever rule I want to put in there so that I can identify this specific user is what I'll put in there. Now, when I click add to list, that rule gets created. And if I just want to verify it before I proceed, I can click preview. And this will tell me, okay, there's a bunch of records here. So I am correct. Um, those are some records that will be synchronized. So I'll click okay. And now my sync set uh, rule, my criteria has been created. I could, I could add a bunch of rules here and really get uh, more fine-tuned with the types of records I want to sync, but I'm just going to keep it to this, where the record manager is equal to Al Blackwell. Now, when I click Next, I can click Finish to create the sync set. And when I click Finish, this sync set has now been created. So now I have two. I have one for Yvonne, who's synchronizing, and I have one for Al. They have two different sync sets. So when they synchronize with my main database, my main database, they'll be synchronizing different records. So now I can click home and I can click, uh, or I don't want to click close yet because the next thing I want to do is now create a remote database for Al. So what we've done so far is we've enabled synchronization in this database. We've created a sync set for Al. We've given him permission to synchronize, but now we need to give him a remote database that he will maintain on his laptop when he's away from the office. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to create that remote database. So I'm going to click that, create remote database. This takes me through a quick wizard. How many remote databases do I want to create? I just want to create one for Al. So I'll click next. And I'm going to give this remote database a name. Now I want to make sure that uh, it, it's a fairly descriptive name. Al will need to recognize this as, hey, Al, this is your remote database that you want to log into. So I'm just going to call it Al Remote Database. And remember, when you're naming databases, you can't use spaces or, or special characters or anything like that. So I'm just going to name it Al Remote DB. And then I'll just have to communicate with him. That's the database you're going to log into when you're away from the office so that you can uh, edit your records uh, in between synchronizations. Now, where am I going to uh, store this database? Um, I'm going to leave it as the default. I want it to appear in my list of databases in ACT. So if you have a space where your databases are usually kept, that's what you should put here, I think. Now I'm going to click Next. And I have to decide what is the what are the records that should be in, in included in this remote database. And that's why I created this Al uh, Blackwell sync set, because those are the records I want him to be synchronizing. So I'm going to select that sync set and click Next. Now I have to make some op, uh, make some choices here on two different things. First of all, do I want to synchronize supplemental files like 
dashboards, layouts, reports, and templates. And this is really great if um, he's got his own layout uh, that he uses, if he has his own queries that he's written uh, and, and uses all the time. Um, this is a good thing to synchronize. Usually you'll keep this checked. Secondly, do you want to allow this database to synchronize attachments? So if there are a lot of attachments to uh, contact records, opportunity records, and so on, you might want that to also synchronize. If there is a whole bunch of them and it's going to cause this synchronization to take you know, a long, long time, maybe you will choose not to allow it. So you'll have to decide uh, what you're going to do in that situation. For this demo, I'm just going to allow these uh, attachments to synchronize. And then the next thing we can do is uh, set a date or a number of days that can pass without a synchronization. And uh, so this, if I have it set to 30, this means um, if Al doesn't synchronize within 30 days, on the 31st day, he's going to get a prompt that says, hey, it's been a while. You need to synchronize. So it's a good little reminder. It doesn't force them to synchronize, but it just prompts them to do it. Uh, so you can set this to however you want it to be, whether it's five days or up to 365 days. Uh, you can set that number to whatever you want it to be. Once I've done that, I'll click Next again. And now we have to choose the uh, connection type that we're using. Now, since I installed the network sync, that's the type of connection I'm going to make here. Um, and then it'll pre-populate the name of my computer that's hosting the sync server. This is where my database is stored on this computer name or this server name. And then there's the port number that was already pre-populated from the network sync service. So that's all filled out for me. I'll click next again. And now we have this preview window that just shows us here's what's going to happen. We're going to create a remote database called Al Remote DB. Here's who it's set for. The sync service is set for Al Blackwell. And it's telling me all the other settings that I created earlier. So I'll click next again. And if I need to password protect this, what's going to happen is ACT is going to build uh, an RDB file. It's going to be a file with an RDB extension. That stands for remote database. This will be a one-time use file that Al will just double click once he's on his laptop. And that will allow him to um, log into ACT with his remote database. The only time you would ever password protect this file is if uh, you're afraid that uh, this file could be stolen, could be uh, taken from your uh, from your machine or Al's machine before he has a chance to uh, log into it. I'm not going to password protect it right now, but you might want to consider doing that. If um, you have any concerns with um, the security of your remote users machines. I'm going to click finish and now it's going to build this database file for me. So ACT is looking at all the records that belong to Al and it's uh, compiling them into an RDB file so that Al can launch his own remote database. Once this is done, we will get a uh, confirmation that says it's finished. And what I'll do is I will locate that RDB file. And all I need to do at that point is find a way to send that RDB file to Al. So I've got a confirmation. I've got a successful check mark, which is great. And then I've got some instructions on how to install a remote database. And it just says you need to copy that file, the RDB file, to whatever computer Al is going to be using. So you'll grab that RDB file, whether you email it to him, whether you share it on a network drive with him, whether you put it on a thumb drive, whatever you have to do, get that RDB file to your remote user. And again, this is a one-time use file that they will then uh, use to restore their own remote database. And I'll show you how that's done too. How do you get to this file? We've conveniently put a link down here at the bottom that says click here to open the folder containing the remote database. So that's great. Let's click that link. It's going to open a uh, Windows Explorer, and it's going to take you right to the location where that RDB file is located. So there it is. You can see it's about 27 megs. It's fairly small, but in larger instances, you'll have uh, high, uh, bigger files there. So I need to copy this file and share this with Al. Okay, now I'm going to pretend that I'm looking at uh, Al's computer. 
Okay, so I'm going to minimize everything here. I'm going to actually log out of ACT. And I'm going to pretend that some time has passed. I've sent this file to Al. We're looking at Al's computer now. And he has taken that Al Remote DB, the RDB file, and he's put it on his desktop. It doesn't really matter where you put this on the remote computer because it's going to be deleted as soon as you use it. So I'm going to put it right in the middle of the screen. Now, what Al will do is if he has ACT open already, then he can unpack and restore this database from the file menu. But the easiest way to do it is to just, with ACT closed, double-click this RDB file. And what this will do is it will launch ACT, and it will begin the process of, of unpacking and restoring that remote database for the remote user. I apologize, my virtual machine is not the fastest, so it may take a little bit uh, for this to run. So whether you open ACT and go to the file menu and do the unpack and restore option or double click that RDB file, it's gonna take you to the same place. It'll launch ACT, it'll bring up this window that says unpack and re restore remote database. Um, if you double click the RDB file, it already knows that file and it knows where it should restore it to, your list of databases. So usually you'll just leave both of these as the default settings and click OK. And now it's gonna extract this remote database. Again, we are using our imagination that I'm on Al's remote machine right now, and it's creating this remote database specifically for him. Once it's finished, it'll say, uh, yes, I, um, uh, I've finished uh, restoring this database. And so now that it's finished, I no, I no longer need this RDB file. So would you like to remove that file? Uh, and the answer is yes. I want to delete it because I don't need it anymore. Now we had a question come up in the chat and I, I kind of skipped over a, an important fact here and I should mention it. For all of your remote employees, your remote ACT users, they will need to have ACT installed on that machine. So ACT... Um, has to be installed. It has to be the same version that's on your host database. So if my host database is ACT version 25, update three, then on all the remote users, laptops or computers, you have to install ACT 25, update three. Uh, once you've done that, now it's gonna ask me to log in. So I'm gonna log in as Al. I've, he has no security. I just gave him a username and, a, and no password. You will have passwords there though. So Al's going to log into this remote database uh, using the same credentials that he would use as if he were in the office. And uh, once this is done, ACT is going to ask us to um, do a synchronization. Now, you'll know I've been talking about ACT Premium Desktop this whole time. After I'm done showing you this, I'm going to show you how you can synchronize if you are on ACT Premium Cloud. So for all of you Act Premium Cloud customers, uh, hang in there. We're going to get to you in just a second here. Um, but I want you to see how this process works because uh, it's basically the same depending on whether you're on desktop or cloud. We're doing the same thing. We're creating a remote database for a remote employee, which they will log into uh, in a desktop client. And once they log in, Act will now give them the ability to uh, synchronize with the host database, whether it is a desktop database or an Act Premium Cloud database. The synchronization uh, processes are virtually the same. So now I've launched Act for Al, and it has launched his remote database. You can see in the top left, it's called Al Remote DB. So we're looking at his remote database. And once this is finished opening, uh, Act will prompt me to uh, to do a synchronization. And it does this the first time you open up that, that remote database. It just wants to make sure, because ACT doesn't know how long it's been since you have created the RDB file. Maybe I created that RDB file and I sent it to Al and he didn't, he didn't open it for a week or so. Well, the host database is gonna have a bunch of changes in there. And so when Al opens up this remote database, uh, it will want to synchronize with that host database before he starts working. And that's what the synchronization process is so important to keep synchronized because you don't want to work on records 
uh, that are out of sync with the host database. You want to make sure you're always syncing um, before you start working in your remote database and then sync again probably after you're finished just to make sure that both the host and the remote database have updated information. So here's that prompt. Would you like to synchronize with the main database now? And I'll just click yes so that you can see what that looks like. Uh, this will launch the synchronization service. Down in my um, taskbar, you can see that little icon is moving now. That means something's happening. It's doing some synchronizations. And uh, we get a progress window over here that shows you everything uh, as they're, as it's happening. If you have not set up either network sync correctly or internet sync correctly, um, you'll see an error before this even starts. If you start getting these green bars, that means you've set it up correctly because it's communicating with the, with the host database. At the very end, after it syncs its records, it uh, will check for any errors uh, that may have occurred. Um, and an error could be something like you have two records that got changed um, either uh, in the host and also in the remote. And uh, there was no synchronization. So it might say, hey, uh, you've got two records that are out of sync. What should we do? Uh, and that's what an error will highlight. You can also view your sync log. If you click that, it opens up a little, little log window. That just gives you um, a summarization of, of everything that's just happened. So there you go. We've, we have enabled synchronization on the host database. We've created a, uh, uh, a remote uh, database for my user, Al, and I've given him permissions to synchronize and we've performed our first sync. So now Al can work offline and he can synchronize back to uh, the host machine at any time. And another thing I should mention is when you do synchronizations like this, the host database doesn't need to be open. I could close ACT. I mean, it is closed. If you look at the system I'm running right now, I've closed my host database. But because that synchronization service is running, it has access to that host database. So ACT doesn't need to be open. However, the machine where the host database is located should be running. If you shut down that machine, then there's no way to synchronize. So uh, make sure you plan that out. That you have that host machine running at all times whenever you're expecting uh, your users to be synchronizing. Okay, let's see. The next thing I want to do here is, um, well, you know, let's let's just show a quick sync. Let's say that Al is going to create um, uh, an activity, maybe with one of his contacts, right? Uh, you'll see that there's a subset here. It's not showing all 300 contacts in the list because I only wanted to synchronize those contacts that have uh, Al Blackwell as record manager. Now you'll see there are some other ones here. These are the users in ACT. So it's always gonna synchronize those. And that's just because if Al needs to schedule a meeting with one of his uh, coworkers, uh, we need to have, we need to make sure that those records are here too. So all the Al Blackwell records plus all of the ACT users will equal this particular uh, sync set. So let's say that Al wants to um, schedule a meeting with, with Emily. We're gonna look at Emily's um, detail view. We'll just schedule a call. I'll just make it a real simple record, a real simple activity. I'm gonna schedule a thank you with Emily. I'll just call it thank you. Let's make it real simple. So Al is gonna call Emily today at 11 o'clock and say thank you. I'll create that record. Now remember, this is only in the remote database. This has not been, uh, created in the host database. So after Al's finished working today, he's going to go to his tools menu and he'll locate the synchronize database submenu. And from here, he's going to choose synchronize now. So here's how you can set up a manual synchronization at any time to just run a quick sync. So it's going to run through this process again of synchronization. And then what we'll do is we'll log in as in the uh, main database again to make sure that this record gets created. So we've got our confirmation is here. I'm going to close this remote database for Al. And now I'm going to pretend that Al goes back into the office the next day. And we're going to open up the main database uh, with which he was syncing. And I'll just log in as me since I'm the, uh, I'm the admin here. And once this opens, I'm going to look at the task list to make sure that there was a thank you call activity 
that got scheduled with Al and Emily for today at 11 a.m. All right, let's go to my task list. And here it is. Thank you with Emily and Al for today at 11. So that synchronization took place uh, from the remote to uh, the host database, and all those records are now up to date. So the next thing I want to show you here is uh, if you're synchronizing for Act Premium Cloud. Now, there are a few prerequisites here that uh, we should talk about. I think uh, you've got to have a, uh, uh, an Act Premium Cloud account, of course. You've got to have multiple users, uh, but you've also got to have the synchronization service on your account. Uh, I believe this is an extra, an extra service that you can purchase. Uh, we call it sometimes we call it hybrid, but it's basically Act Premium Cloud with remote uh, desktop synchronization. The same process will happen here. You'll create a sync set for one of your users. You'll create a remote database for them. And you'll have to install Act Premium Desktop on their machine. And then you'll do the restore and synchronize process again. So I'm going to go into my Act Premium Cloud account. Let me just close this database and open up a browser window. I'm going to log into my Act Premium Cloud account, locate the database I'm going to use, and launch it. And then from here, I'm going to process is going to be fairly similar. There's a couple things that might be different just because of a, a different user interface. But once I've logged in, I'm going to go to my tools menu and I will locate this remote database synchronization option here. When I click that, it gives me my setup remote synchronization window. So what, what you wanna do here is you'll begin by, again, creating a sync set. That's the first thing you should do. And one of the neat things is it creates a bunch of pre-decided sync sets for you. So in this case, I might just wanna look up my sync set for Al Blackwell. Here it is. It knows ahead of time that I want to synchronize for this particular user. I can choose this preset, or you can create your own sync set with your own criteria if you want. Once you choose one, uh, oops, let me select that again. Why am I not able to do this? What did I do wrong? Let me go. There we go. I don't know what I did. I'll click next. And now I have uh, an option here. It's saying sync set name. Well, I don't want that one. Did I choose the wrong one? No, I did right. Okay. Let me start over here. Somehow I I did something in this system that made it not work. Maybe I need to go look at my manage users to make sure Al has synchronized permissions. So I'm going to look for Al and I'm going to edit user information. And I'm going to add permissions. Ah, oh, that's probably what it is. I need to make sure, again, I don't skip any steps here. And I want to add remote administration to Al's user tasks. Once I do that, it'll say I might have to update passwords for him. I understand that. And I'll click finish and close. All right, let's try this again. Remote database synchronization. Create a sync set and locate Al and then click next. Okay, that was the problem. I didn't set up my permission for him first. So don't skip that step like I did. Make sure you set up your user with remote synchronization first. And then you can create your sync set. So it's telling me the name of the sync set is going to be called Al Blackwell device sync set. That's fine. I could put a description down in here if I wanted to. Uh, records, Al's records whatever I wanted to type in that um, description. Now when I click next, it's asking me to select the user of the remote database. So I'm just gonna verify this is gonna be Al and I'll click next. Now, uh, one thing I should mention here is most of your usernames are gonna be email addresses here. Uh, the reason that my users don't have email addresses here is because 
I migrated a database from uh, Act uh, Premium Desktop into the cloud, and so it just preserved um, those usernames. I haven't I haven't had any of these people uh, log in yet. So um, once I do that, it'll probably change their username to an email address. Uh, now we selected our contacts and I have to decide what should he synchronize. So again, I'm going to do define sync set criteria and I'm going to, I'm going to follow the same steps I did before. I'm going to create uh, criteria and I'll follow the same rules. So I'm going to say record manager is equal to, and I'll type in Al Blackwell. I'll add that to the list. And I'll preview it just to make sure some records show up, and they do. So now I can click OK. Now I have a sync set created for Al, and I've confirmed it. So now I'll click Finish. So a lot of these steps are pretty much the same when you're creating a sync set. And then the next thing we need to do, just like we did on the desktop area, is create a remote database. So I'll click this button here to create a remote database. I'll have to give it a name. Um, I want to name it differently from my desktop one because I'm using the same computer for both. So I'm going to just call this one Al, and then the name of the database, CloudWalker 20326. That just, for me, that reminds me, this is for the Ag Premium Cloud account. So I've named that database, and I have to choose the sync set, and I'm going to use the one that I just created. So I'll scroll down and I'll look for Al, Al's records. There it is. Click next again. Once again, we have to choose, are we synchronizing supplemental files, dashboards, layouts, queries, et cetera? And I'm gonna say yes. And this is really great because if you uh, want to create custom reports and you're on Act Premium Cloud, this is a great way to do it because Act Premium Cloud, you can't create custom reports. You can only do that on the desktop. So if you're using Act Premium Cloud and you want your own custom reports, um, go hybrid and uh, create these reports and then sync them back uh, to the cloud and you'll have your reports for you. So I'm going to synchronize all these supplemental files. I'm going to allow uh, the database to synchronize attachments. And again, I'll set his reminder to synchronize in five days if he doesn't do it within that amount of time. Here's my little summary. Uh, just verify that everything is correct and I'll click next again. And now it's creating this remote database for me. This may take a little bit of time because now remember what's happening is this remote is being created server side. Uh, so depending on the connection, the speed of the server, this may take a little bit longer than if it was uh, creating it on your super duper fast uh, home computer. All right, after it's finished doing that, it gives you instructions on how to acquire that RDB file. Again, we have to do that. We need that remote database file. We have to put that on Al's computer so that he can unpack it and uh, work uh, locally on, on Act Desktop and then uh, synchronize to Act Premium Cloud. So how are we gonna find this RDB file? Well, it says click next for instructions on how to download it. So we're gonna do that even though we have instructions here. We're gonna click next again. And here's our begin download button. So we'll click that and see that it popped up in my browser up there. It said one download in progress. If I access this file and I want to look at it on my computer, show in folder, it'll open up that download um, area. So it, it put it in my downloads directory by default uh, and that's fine. That's what I wanted it to do. So now that I have that, I can click finish. And now I can uh, cancel out of this window. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize my cloud environment really quick. And uh, I'm gonna have to close, actually, let's, let's show you the other way to do it. So normally, Al would double click this RDB file, but if he already has ACT open, he can go into this file menu and choose restore database. And from here, you can choose Unpack and Restore Remote Database. So this is if you already have an RDB file, this is the uh, option that you'll choose from the Restore Database window. It opens this 
uh, window we've seen before, but it doesn't know where your RDB file is. So that's why double clicking an RDB file is a little bit better. It just already knows where that file is. So I'm going to browse to my downloads area where I know I saved it and I'll click open. And then I'm just going to restore it to the normal location and click OK. Now it's extracting uh, that remote uh, that remote database file for Al for Act Premium Cloud. Once it's done that, it's going to ask me, do you want me to delete the RDB file? And yeah, delete it because, again, it's no longer needed. Once you unpack and restore an RDB file, it's pretty much useless. So now Al's going to log in. And this should open up ACT, uh, the database for his remote cloud uh, uh, database. And again, it asks to synchronize, and this will look exactly the same. The only difference is now, instead of synchronizing to a host database on a server in my office, it's synchronizing to the host database uh, in the cloud hosted by ACT. But the uh, interface will look exactly the same. And so now, once this is finished, Al can work in a desktop environment locally and restore all of his uh, edits and changes to the cloud uh, environment. So there's your hybrid, uh, there's your hybrid uh, environment. Now, let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages for using uh, synchronization with Act Premium Cloud. For one thing, your servers are stable because you're you're not uh, burdened by hosting these servers. They're hosted in the cloud by us. Uh, those servers will be stable. They're always running. Also, we're run, we're doing backups of your databases for you at regular intervals. Uh, we perform all the maintenance of those databases. Whereas if you're hosting it yourself, then you're responsible for your backups and your own uh, maintenance uh, and upgrades and things like that. Um, and like I mentioned before, you know, desktop users, uh, you can use the cloud as a stable backup system. So uh, if you're on Act Premium Cloud and you're syncing to a desktop client like I am, I don't even have to worry about backups. My backups are taking care of me. I just have to remember to synchronize uh, as often as is comfortable for me. Uh, really only one disadvantage is your synchronization process might run a little bit slower if you're going from um, your remote desktop to the cloud, it just depends on your internet uh, speed. Uh, whereas if you're in the office, your intranet is probably running a lot faster. Uh, but that's really the only disadvantage I could think of. Let's talk about some best practices here uh, for syncing. So pros and cons for even having a synchronization environment or synchronization um, method at your company. I'll start with the cons. So um, one of the cons might be security of your data in the case of employee termination. Uh, one of the fears might be that um, an employee gets terminated uh, and then they steal all the, the records before they leave. Well, what you can do is you can immediately remove their ability to sync by going into the uh, that user's uh, uh, permissions and you can just remove that remote administration permission from that employee and then they will have no ability to synchronize so that might be a fear but but it's easily resolved by just changing that permission for their account um, another con might be the potential for users to uh, keep their clients only on their remote uh, machines and then never syncing that's always a fear you know they forget to sync they just don't have the, the habit or the discipline of syncing uh, there's some things that we can do uh, to, to prompt them, to remind them to sync um, and even create automatic syncs for them. Another con might be that uh, you have to upgrade all of your laptops when ACT upgrades. So if your host machine upgrades to a newer version of ACT, you have to upgrade all of your laptops that are, are syncing to it. So that could be a, a little bit of a hassle if you have a lot of people uh, remoting in and syncing in. Um, but just put that process in place. Whenever you update or upgrade the uh, host database, uh, make sure everybody else is updating at the same time. 
Another con might be that API connections are more difficult to maintain across multiple machines. So if you're uh, if you're doing things like Zapier connections um, and you're trying to do that both on the host database and the remote database, there might be a little bit of difficulty in that. But we can help you resolve those. Some pros for syncing is um, you can work offline and you don't have to be consistently connected to the internet or, con or connected to your host database. Um, if you have a slow connection to your database, um, you can just work offline and um, and then synchronize. Um, if you have multi-regional databases with multiple networks, this can reduce performance. And so synchronization might be a solution for that. Uh, synchronization frequency. Let's talk about that. How often should you synchronize? I think once a day is recommended. I think that's what most people do is they synchronize once a day. I would probably say synchronize the beginning of your day and then at the end of your day, just to make sure, uh, especially at the beginning of the day, so that you're starting the day with, with the up-to-date information, the up-to-date uh, data. But also at the end of the day, if you're sharing, if you're collaborating with other users, I would synchronize at the end of the day as well, just to make sure when you leave, uh, they have the most up-to-date information. So um, it just depends on, on how your company is, is run. Um, if you synchronize with shorter frequencies, more than once a day, uh, there's a possibility that your users could collide with each other if they're, everybody's synchronizing at the same time. So you want to just be careful about uh, if we're all changing the same record and we're all synchronizing, that record could uh, cause not just a maybe corrupt data, but a syncing loop. So you have to kind of organize this. You have to be smart about this when you're setting this up. If you synchronize very frequently, it can increase the load on your traffic, on your servers, on your remote machines. So maybe not synchronizing every 10 minutes. Maybe that's not the best idea. Um, if you need a real-time system, if you find that you're not syncing often enough and you need a real-time system, then I would just suggest using the direct connect model, not, not a synchronization model. The host database machine, this is your desktop environment. Uh, I mentioned this before. Keep that hosted database on a server or a machine that's always running. If you shut down that machine, you're also shutting down the sync service and then you won't be able to synchronize. So the database itself doesn't have to be open. ACT doesn't have to be open, but as long as the sync service is running, it will be able to access that database for you. And data organization, the last thing here, there's some, there's some things you can do that are best practices. Um, if you have a lot of records in your system and it goes way back five, six, seven, 10 years, 15 years, some of you have data that's 20 years or older, maybe archive some of those old records because they might not need to be synced anymore. Some, um, you know, task or history record that's 10 years old. Do you really need to sync that every time? Probably not. So, um, archive some of those old old records. You don't have to delete them, but if you archive them, then they'll, they're still there, but they won't be part of your sync process. Uh, if you have inactive employees or former employees, I would always recommend migrating their records to other employees or other users of your database. Uh, that way those records don't get abandoned. Um, make sure that all of your records are assigned to active users in your ACT database. Again, using sync sets like we talked about will help filter out the records that don't matter so that you can have more streamlined synchronizations and couple those sync sets with security uh, so that uh, your users can't necessarily sync the data that they shouldn't see. Uh, if you use all those kind of ideas, uh, your synchronizations will go a lot smoother. And the last thing I want to talk about, uh, I believe, is uh, the sync scheduler or the the uh, the Act Scheduler. So Act Scheduler is a separate process, separate application that gets installed when you install Act. And it lets you schedule things like database backups if you're on the desktop environment. Um, but it also lets you schedule automatic synchronizations. Uh, you have to set this up for each remote user. Uh, and then you can choose your own synchronization frequency. And if you want an uh, email verification to let you know when a sync either uh, succeeded or failed, uh, you can uh, have that happen as well. So let me show you that really quick. This will be the last thing we cover today. If I'm on my desktop environment, uh, I can access my ACT scheduler by simply going to the tools menu and uh, choosing 
Act Scheduler. Uh, this will create a user account control, which you have to click yes to in order for this window to appear. I'm going to minimize everything else so it doesn't look too confusing. So here's my act scheduler. You can see I've already created a couple of uh, scheduled items to take place. Uh, and so what I want to do is create a database sync for Al to just happen automatically. So I don't have to remind him every day uh, to synchronize. Let's just, uh, on his machine, I'll create this synchronization to take place because remember, a synchronization is triggered on the remote machine. You can't make the you can't have the host's machine force someone to sync. It has to be initiated from the remote. So going to Al's computer, I'm going to create a task on his act scheduler. And I'm gonna locate the file, which is his um, pad file for his remote database. So we'll use this uh, Act Premium Cloud one. I need his username and password. And then I need to select a task. Now, since he's, uh, if I was looking at um, specifically only the um, synchronization database, it would say only this one. It wouldn't let me do a backup and, or maintenance. So I'm gonna do a synchronize. I'm gonna click next. And now I just have to choose my schedule. So how often do I want Al to synchronize? Maybe I want it to happen every day um, and maybe during off hours. It's another good idea to schedule these things uh, when there's not a lot of people logging in at the same time. So maybe for Al, I want it to start tomorrow at, let's just say 2 a.m. Maybe that's when there's the least amount of traffic. I'll click next. And then if I wanna email myself, uh, confirmation of that synchronization, I could put my email address in there. Um, and then when I click finish, it will create this new uh, schedule where starting at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, it's going to do an automatic sync uh, for Al. Uh, so that's a useful way to um, make sure that your users are syncing as often as you want them to. Okay, I believe that uh, brings us to the end of this webinar. Um, a few things I wanna talk about before we close down for the day. Um, if you'd like to see some of the previous webinars we've done, we've, we've done these once a month for the last 13 months now, uh, just go to act.com slash explore. That'll take you to the ACT Training Webinar Series page where you can view any of the previous webinars that we've done. Um, Andy Wood has hosted a few in ACT Marketing Automation. I've hosted a few for things like um, third-party integrations, Outlook integration, um, pretty much anything you can think of, uh, customizations. There's just a lot of topics in there. If you're new to ACT or even if you're not new to ACT and there's just some areas you'd like to learn more about, check out some of those older webinars. And again, if you have a question or a topic you'd like us to cover in a future webinar, you can either put that in the survey or you can just email us directly at team at act.com. We really do want to hear your ideas. Uh, we like to um, hear what you're thinking and um, teach you however you need to be taught. And so thank you very much for joining us. We'll hang around for a little bit longer just to make sure that all the uh, questions are answered in the Q&A panel in Zoom. Um, but again, thank you for joining us. Uh, if I don't talk to you before next month, have a great month. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Um,